Coming up on Unscripted Faith. <clears throat> Amazing grace, oh. how sweet okay. the sound <laughs> that saved a wretch like Freel. Oh. Todd Freel, okay. that is. <laughs> I don't know if y'all caught that or not. He's going to share. Todd Friel is going to share why he believes he's the wretch on that song I just referred to. Oh, shoot. And come we're on. also going to talk through how we come through trauma and find healing in the love of God. Author and spoken word artist Kina Aragon joins us to share about the greatest love story ever told and how you're at the center of it. Unscripted Faith begins right now. So let's get started. I didn't know I could sing, did you? You didn't know I could sing. You <laughs> now, didn't know. I, I heard, I've caught clips, Jay, so I knew you had it in you. <laughs> well, we are so excited because, listen, as believers, our next guest says there's two types, two different types of fish, good fish and rotten fish, and he's here to explain that to us. Todd Friel of Wretched TV. Todd, welcome to Unscripted Faith. You know what? I resent you. I really do. That you can sing like that, that just, oh, I... But I figured out why God did not give me a singing voice, because that is all I would do. I would be one of those guys. I would sing everything all the time just to let everybody know I've got an amazing voice. So I covet your pipes, dude. Oh, well, listen, thanks, awesome. man. And I, I, listen, you inspired me today. I told I said, listen, I'm going to bring it out. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't brought it out on Scripted Faith, but you inspired it. And with that song, matter of fact, I just I actually... I would do it too if I could. And I just did a funeral yesterday and sang that song. So it's been my rotation right okay. now. Okay. In my rotation. I always say I'm going to sound real good when I get to heaven. <laughs> Wait, Todd, let's get right into it. Uh, you know, we love having conversations here. And you have a phenomenal story of how you've come into ministry. You have a background in comedy and some other things. Take us into your story. Well, I did not grow up in a Christian home, I, I, but I had an obsessive fear of death. I didn't know God. I didn't know Jesus Christ. But I knew that when I took my last breath, I was going to be in big trouble. So I prayed like obsessively to a God I didn't know that he would literally let me live forever. Now, I'm not talking about eternal life. I'm talking about that I would never perish <laughs> on this planet and live forever. And uh, gratefully, uh, God uh, brought me to a church and he ultimately gave me a better life than just living on this planet for forever. So I didn't grow up in a Christian home but when I initially was introduced to Jesus Christ, because of the terrors that I had of hell, I, I, I was a false convert because all I wanted from God was a get out of hell free card. That's yeah. it. That's just, you know, save me from that and right. I'm good to go. So when I heard believe in Jesus, I was like, thumbs up. I am all for it. A check. I believe in Jesus. Give me my card to get out of hell free. But I hadn't repented. I hadn't put my trust in Jesus Christ. I didn't surrender. I didn't submit to his lordship. And so I was a false convert who happened to dig religious stuff. You know, some people, they dig like music studies or science or math or architecture. I just happen to like religion. And I like the smell of church. I like the people. I like the stale coffee. And so I decided to become a pastor. The problem was I was not a genuine convert. And so years later when God saved me, that is why I, I have a passion that people aren't confused like I was or self-deceived like I was thinking they're on a highway to heaven when in reality, they're on the broad road to destruction. And the reality is y'all, we see this false conversion rate manifesting itself in a myriad of ways and statistics. Why is it that we just saw this report I believe it was like 70% of Christian men admit they watch pornography regularly. Yeah. Stop wow. with that. Yeah. So the signs of false conversions are everywhere. And I just like to perhaps help people do a little self-examination to make sure they don't hear depart from me, you worker of iniquity on judgment day. 
Wow. I love that you're bringing an awareness to that because even just that language, I feel that people can grab a hold of that more contextually. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you come into the awareness that you were, in fact, a false convert? You know what? Uh, it was, believe it or not, it was Christian radio. Wow. I started listening to the local station. It was an FM station, so it was just a flamethrower, and you could hear it. And a guy named Chuck Swindoll caught my attention, that amazing voice that he has. And it was called Insight for Living. And as I was listening to this guy, I was hearing all of the theology that I had learned, but didn't really believe or understand. And I, I was hearing him take these big ideas from the top shelf and bring them down into reality. And it dawned on me, um, wow, this is this stuff is is actually true. Found a church to go to, and I heard the gospel clearly, and a call to repentance. I I did math. Uh, I, I was going through school uh, because chapel was twice a day, five days a week, once on Saturday, church on Sunday. So I probably heard about three thousand sermons or sermonettes. And I heard the gospel, but I never heard anybody say, hey, have you repented and put your trust in Jesus Christ? If not, today is the day of salvation. So I was simply self-deceived and nobody called me out on it. So that's why, as lovingly as possible, want to try to call people out on it. And, and Todd, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I heard you say that you were a false convert, but you were pastor. Is that what I yeah, heard? No, I, well, thankfully... I didn't go into pastoral ministry. Okay. I studied to be a pastor, uh, but it had become too much, you know, learning Greek and Hebrew and all of that was just like, <laughs> I, I, I was done with it. And so I just, I, I decided to pursue worldly things, uh, business and career, did stand up comedy, did some TV and radio, all of those things. Uh, but I was a self-righteous, self-deceived false convert. I mean, I thought I was a Christian and you born again types. <laughs> You're all just religious fanatics and weird. Well, now I'm one of you. <laughs> it's kind of like what they say, welcome to the granola Christian, the fruits, nuts, and flakes. So we've got plenty of those in the body of Christ. You know, that's, that's actually a sign, according to 1 John, that you are a Christian. You love the brethren. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can have pagan friends, yeah. but you... I just want to be with Christians. That is a sign of genuine salvation. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, tell us about rotten fish and good fish, or good fish and bad fish. What's this whole, yeah, take us in there. Well, Jesus was relentless on this subject. It, this wasn't a touch and go issue. Well, hey, it, you could be a false convert, and then he moved on to doing a miracle. No, he was relentless in exposing the reality that people can be self-deceived. For instance, the Pharisees and the scribes, they were self-deceived. They were religious people. They, they, they thought they were the godly ones. And Jesus informed them, hey, you, your heart is rotten and wicked. You got religiosity going on, so you can do religious things, but that doesn't mean that your heart is given to God. God. So he exposed the scribes and the Pharisees relentlessly in the Gospel of Matthew. He talked about wise virgins, foolish virgins. He talked about wheat and tares, good fish and rotten fish. And Jesus, especially in the Gospel of Luke, if you want to do a tour from like Luke 10 through about Luke 20, he's just all over it. The rich young ruler, hey, how do I get to heaven? And Jesus exposed him as not being a genuine seeker. So this subject is of great importance to our Savior. And I want to be careful, having said all of this, that we don't become self-obsessed with self-analyzation, mm -hmm. that we're constantly... Okay, yeah. um, I just had a bad thought about that guy who's an idiot driver. <laughs> I'm not a Christian. Be careful that you don't become scrupulous in that <laughs> regard. But we do well to, on occasion, examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. And First John gives us a 10 point test mm. to be able to do Amen. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. What do you think is something in about a last minute here we have together, what do you think is something that believers can go to, you know, those who are maybe like you, they were, they're a false convert that they can go to, to examine themselves mm, yeah. without getting so, you know, self-deprecating. 
what can they go to to know the difference if they're a good fish or they're a bad fish, rotten fish? <laughs> well, yeah, first, first, first John, first John five says, I write these things that you might know you're saved, that you would, that you have eternal life. And he does give, he gives about 12 or 15, some of them are a little redundant, tests to say, are these my affections? Want to be careful because you're not going to score a 10 out of 10. You're going to be failing. In fact, if we're really honest, we fail in all regards. So I think we can use first John to realize, wow, I'm not what I should be, but here's, Here's where we need to be careful in our self-examination. If we think that we're not doing everything perfectly, we could conclude we're not saved. Well, congratulations. I promise you, you ain't doing everything perfectly. That only happens in glorification. So the better question to ask is this. Not how, how sanctified am I, but how sanctified do I want to be? That's good. Mm -hmm. This is a heart yeah. issue. That's very good. You're going to see a lot of sins, but ask yourself the question, do I loathe them? Do I love righteousness? How much do I want Jesus? That mm -hmm. is the better telltale sign uh, than doing, a, am I doing everything perfectly checklist? That's well, that's outstanding, Pastor Friel. Uh, <laughs> let, let, me, let, me, let me sneak this in real quick. Let me sneak this in real Go quick, y'all. If you're saying to yourself, I, I'm terrified I'm not saved, the Puritans would tell you that's one of the best signs you actually are wow. saved because a false convert doesn't err. Wow. wow, that's really good. Well, listen, we have so appreciated uh, this time with you. Uh, I love your sense of humor uh, along with the seriousness. You're really taking the complex and more serious matters and like you said, taking them from the top shelf and bringing them down yeah. so everybody can understand. We kind of laugh about it as well. So thank you so much for coming by and hanging out with us on Unscripted Faith. If, if you don't sing us out, mate, I'm going to be disappointed. Come on. Sing us out? <laughs> only yeah. if you'll sing with me. Can you harmonize? Oh, 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 no. Not a he chance. Once was, he once was lost, but now he's found. Was blind, but now he sees. Let's there we go, go, man. There we go. Hey, thanks Let's so much go. for hanging out with us, man. We so enjoyed you. God bless you. Appreciate all you do, y'all. Stay with us as Kina Aragon joins us next, and she has the antidote for any curious and aching hearts pondering the question, does God actually love me? Find out what she has to say when Unscripted Faith returns in just 60 seconds. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing, deepen your relationship with Him, and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in His counsel, and hear His wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness His word manifest in your life and return to His promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith. We all want to feel loved. There's no question about it. And we especially want to feel loved by God. But I think a lot of us can agree that we've all struggled at one point or another to feel his presence and to feel his love for us. Kina joins us now. And Kina, is this something that you have personally struggled with? Yeah, you know, for a long time, I, I try to be honest and vulnerable. I, I want to raise my hand as the one who says, listen, I as much as I've learned about the love of God, can quote bajillion scriptures to you about the love of God, I have struggled to feel it in my bones. And I know I'm not the only one as I, you know, continue in conversation and ministry. There's so many of us out there that maybe intellectualize our faith so much that we miss out on the actual experience of what Romans 5 talks about. God pours out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit um, and Romans 8 talking about, you know, us being able to cry out by the Spirit, Abba, Father. And so I'm, I've known those things, but I've, I've struggled to really feel it. And so isn't it so like God to take the area of our deepest woundedness and our deepest doubts and use us then to become 
heralds, as it were, to of those things, of those realities that he is love, that he is loving. We are the beloved. And so um, that tells me not only does God have a sense of humor, but that he's so into making a beeline into the deepest muck and mire of our stories and bringing great beauty and redemption from them. You know, even when you're saying that, I'm thinking about just speaking with Todd and how he called himself a false convert, you know? And I do think mm -hmm. that a lot of people find themselves in that category simply because they don't feel his presence. Now, you weren't completely consumed by love and tenderness and all these good things growing up, but you managed to experience his presence. Tell us a little bit about what you have gone through and how God has made himself manifest to you. Absolutely. I mean, sheesh, I mean, from the from the beginning, I mean, I've had a loving family, but, you know, doing the best they can. And yet at the same time, as we know, we live in a broken world. Mm -hmm. We have generational patterns of corruption and brokenness that continue on into our lives and spill over into our stories that we are born into. We are born into stories that are already existing. And so, um, you know, for me, there there was I have complex PTSD. And so that that's a reality that I deal with um, from from, from back in the day, from when I was a kid. And, you know, if anything, I would love to jump in and just kind of parachute into a scene from the time I was around 16, 17, as I first came to know and follow Jesus, if that's cool with you yes. guys. Yeah, that's great. As a matter of fact, just awesome. so everybody knows too, this is going to be a spoken word excerpt, right? It is. Okay, yeah. So, so it's a piece knows. I wrote yes. in my recent book and, and uh, yeah, just kind of it's called Go Welcome to the Faith. Go for awesome. It. Welcome to the faith at 16. And back then, I'd have run through a rod for my God. Brand new believer. Welcome, Kina. You'll never be the same. And I wasn't. But then again, back then, I saw no face to mirror my emotional conflictedness at my parents' split just months after I prayed my first true amen. Back when I didn't know I should maybe mention home was swallowing me whole. And the only touch that seemed safe touched me in ways that shoveled me under my shame. Mm. Bearing your name, but sneaking hands where they shouldn't be. Welcome to the faith. Welcome to secrecy. Back then, you were new to me, yet you were my everything. I knew to follow meant carrying cross, yet staring at addiction's grimace, the way it makes the finest face shrivel and sink, deflating the ability to dream at 17. I, I admit... I didn't expect it. Back when I'd cringe in class as kids laughed and rapped about crack cocaine like it didn't just disintegrate everything around me, like it wasn't the enemy. No, back then, I thought maybe this was it. Maybe this was your plan for me, my purpose, to never get out, so I quit. To my forever chagrin, it seems, volleyball dreams, my student athlete trajectory back when my high school coach, who'd known a bit about my home, for some reason made it his mission to torment me all season, antagonizing my newfound faith, then pulled me aside to tell me a lie. I'd spend the rest of my life trying not to believe, but I believed it then. He drew a chart on a paper, pointed to its peak and said, this is you now, almost 18. This is the best you'll ever be. It's only downhill from here. Back when I'd already seen my friend die, my mentor die, my life tear at the seams. Back then, I didn't know this was all called trauma, that my brain would black out memories my body would keep, my nightmares would later remind me of back when I began this great migration, away from hoping in my, fle my own fleeting sense of success to hoping in the resurrection. Yes, back then, my childhood experienced its own sort of death, welcomed to the faith with pain I still feel today. But back then, I remember, I refuse to forget. Yes, I refuse to forget. I'd lay my head on the pillow and pray to this Jesus. I'd found myself in love with this Jesus who I knew had changed me, was changing me within. And back then, you gave me a vision. In the screaming silence of my loneliness, there you were, holding me. With scarred hands, you'd rock me in the night till finally I'd fall asleep. Welcomed to the faith, I've never been the same. Yeah. Wow, that is powerful, Kina. 
You know, just to give us some backdrop to that now, what was going on in your world that gave you the inspiration to write what you're writing now? You know, it took me the 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 purpose of, you know, writing this book that that I just wrote, you know, it was the most important piece that I wrote because of as I'm now in my 30s, I'm processing those things that happened to me in my teenage years, um, especially as I first came to know Jesus. It was like, welcome to the faith. Here's trauma after trauma after trauma. And those are things that don't get processed overnight. And I didn't necessarily have the resources or even the, the knowledge to open up to anybody about it. And so now in my 30s, um, you know, through helpful Christian community, through safe, uh, wise friendships, as well as trauma therapy, um, with a wonderful Christian therapist, uh, that those are things that God has given me, along with other things like my husband, who's an amazing, safe place for me as well, um, to really process those things. For someone who's like going through this now, uh, you know, we're sitting here, we're listening to your story and just getting a little piece of what you've been through. What are some key takeaways that like um, today I can go back to my friends, I can share with others about like those, those moments. What is something we can do in the middle of someone experiencing pain and trauma? What is something we can do to change it for them then? Well, wow. I think uh, I, th I just thought of Job's friends sitting with him for those first seven days yeah. in yeah. silence. And as when they start to speak is when we get into trouble. <laughs> and so um, just the the there's a beauty in um, what Jesus does when his friend Lazarus dies, which is to come and to take time to weep with uh, the sisters of Lazarus, to weep with those who are suffering in our lives and to, as, as Roman says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And so oftentimes uh, we don't always have the heart space to offer that to other people because maybe we haven't experienced it for ourselves in our relationship with God and our relationship to others. And so, um, you know, obviously asking God for, for wisdom that comes from above, as James talks about, um, but being willing to sort of embody what Jesus was is somebody who goes into the pit in the muck and mire with people um, who are broken down and who's willing to weep, even though we have great hope that he brings resurrection from dead things. Well, we've got about a minute left or so. Um, just give us where are you at now? Because obviously you went through a lot in your teenage years. You said you're in your 30s now. What has God done and what's he doing in your life today? Ah, so many things. I would say I'm still healing. I'm still growing. I'm still uh, learning. I think the the miracle for me uh, and the reality for me is that I'm not the hero of my story. If anybody should have quit and punted the faith by now, if anybody should have said, forget about this Jesus stuff, it's me. Not because my suffering is worse than anybody else's. I'm just saying I've never felt like I've been built like that, <laughs> you know, to, to keep holding on. And yet here I am this morning on my knees, prayer and reading the scriptures. I mean, that to me is the miracle is that God's love never ceases as Lamentation says. And so therefore my story is not done. Amen. Let's go, Kina, thank you. And thank you for sharing your yes. story so succinctly through the gift that the Lord has given you. Like you spoke that and I feel like I know so much about you and what you've endured. And to hear how God has rescued you is beautiful. Thank you for being with us today. Mm, thank you guys. Stick with us when we return. We're going to share from our personal experiences about a time when we felt abandoned by God, but how he ultimately came through. We'll be right back. This week on Sister to Sister, we asked, have you ever had to break up with a friend? What did it teach you? I'll never break up with you, Kathy. All righty then. Another question, is the devil trying to trick us? Yep. This week, don't miss Sister to Sister. Make Cornerstone Network your home for the best in local Christian TV bringing you programs like to hear news that their loved ones are home and they should know that we will not rest. We will not rest until we fulfill our mission to bring all our hostages back home. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. Welcome home. 
I hope you've enjoyed this unscripted faith. It has been powerful. Jay, I want to ask you, after hearing from Todd and hearing from Kina, was there a time in your life when you personally felt abandoned by God? Um, I, I think it was a, probably the greatest time was when my mother got sick. Mm -hmm. I might have shared this before, and I'm sure people have heard a little bit of my testimony, but that was a very struggling time for me because it's one thing where you're not living right. You kind of say, yeah. well, maybe I'm not going to be blessed. But it's another thing when I was preaching the gospel, I was single, and I was single for real, for real. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't out yeah. playboying and all that stuff. I mean, I was really living the life. I wasn't doing all the things a lot of other people were doing, and I seen other people get healed. I saw mm. a kid with autism that never spoke. We prayed for him that afternoon. He started speaking. I mean, I mm. saw these things. My mother was dying on the front row. Yes. And at that point, I really began to battle my mind because I was like, you know what? I'm living for you. I yeah. ain't out messing around. Yep. I'm doing this and seeing other people get blessed. My mother's dying. She's sitting there on the front row, completely bald, dwindled down to mm. nothing. And I'm watching her while I'm serving God. Yeah. And just the pain of that. And I think that was probably the most difficult time. Now, the great part about it, when I came through all that, God spoke something to me. He said, think praise. And he said, no matter what you're going through, I'm mm -hmm. always good all the time. And all that's how time. he brought me through that. I could not allow the devil to take that and plant that in my mind and let it take root. So, sure. but that was a time that was the most hardest for me. Because wow. I was hurt. I was hurt. Of course. I think that's always difficult when you're trying to understand the mind of God in those moments, you know, especially mm -hmm. with your mother. You know, I can remember, I would say, I don't know that I honestly have ever felt abandoned by God. Like it has been a knowing in the depths of me mm -hmm. that he's always been with me. Sure. But there was definitely in my college, um, my time in school, it was a divine call. I had a vision before going to school, knew I was supposed to be there. But my junior year, things really came to a head because I felt like I was carrying the weightiness of this vision. Mm -hmm. But I was like, God, where are you? Like, where is the person with skin on them that is you? Like, that's what I need. You know, mm -hmm. I had this personified idea of God that I felt I needed. And to be honest, Jay, it was in that moment that supplied me with the realest, most honest answer from the Father. And it was this, he said, am I not enough? Yeah. You know, and so in a moment where I'm looking for something like a table, you know, like a person right here mm -hmm. being this firm in front of me, he came in a whisper mm -hmm. and he restored my soul and my heart back to him and I knew he was with me. I knew he was there, but he realigned my heart to know he's more than enough. I don't right. need anything or anyone else except for him. Well, it's amazing whether it's like Todd who yeah. couldn't call himself the wretch or someone uh, yes. like Kina yes. who was afflicted by wretches yes. or whether it's you and I, no matter where we yes. are, the love of God is always more than enough. And so if that's the most important thing we can always lean on. Even yes. when we can't trace him, yes. we can still trust him. Come and if on. we can have that, we can make it through any situation we're walking through. That's it. And I love how Todd brought us to this understanding, like, let's examine ourselves. Let's make yeah. sure we are truly following that which Christ would want. If we're not loving the brethren, there's That's probably right. something amiss. That's you know? right. That's right. Amen. <laughs> so no matter where you are with the Father, no matter what it is that you're going through, lean into him and trust that he has more ahead of you and he is always with you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.